Hi, this is Mrs. Wiederholt, and welcome to my lesson video on graphing and transformations of cubic functions. Now let's get started. When written as an equation, the cubic function is very similar to the quadratic function. Let's take a look. The standard form of a quadratic function can be written as f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. While the standard form of a cubic function is f of x equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. The highest degree of a quadratic function is 2, and the highest degree of a cubic function is 3. Now we could write other polynomial equations or functions in standard form, and they would be similar. For example, we could have f of x equals ax to the fourth power plus bx to the third power plus cx squared plus dx plus e. Do you see the pattern? Now the parent cubic function is f of x equals x to the third power. Again, this is very similar to the parent quadratic function, which is f of x equals x squared. Now the quadratic function has another form, and it's called the vertex form. And that looks like this, f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Now you guessed it, the cubic function also has a form very similar to this. Can you guess what the only difference is? Well, that's right. It's the exponent. It changes from 2 to 3. So it would look like this. f of x equals a times x minus h cubed plus k. Now, this is not called the vertex form of a cubic function because there is no vertex of a cubic function. And we will learn more about this form later. Now let's look at graphing the parent cubic function. Now we're going to start off with this table. We have a set of x values given, and we're going to find the corresponding y values by taking each x value, substituting it for x in the parent cubic function equation. Now, let's start out. When x is negative 2, we have y equals negative 2 cubed. And negative 2 cubed is negative 8. Now we're going to use negative 1 for x. So y equals negative 1 cubed, and negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Now we're going to use 0. 0 cubed is simply 0. Now we're going to cube 1. y equals 1 cubed, which is 1. And then we're going to say y equals 2 cubed, and 2 cubed is 8. Now we have ordered pairs that we can graph. So first I'm going to graph the ordered pair negative 2, negative 8. And that should be about right there. Now I'm going to graph negative 1, negative 1, and then 0, 0, positive 1, positive 1, and 2, positive 2, positive 8. So here we have our ordered pairs. And so I typically start here in the center just to graph. It's a little easier, and I'm sorry, this will not be perfect. It's kind of hard to draw on this screen. But that's kind of what the parent cubic function looks like. Before we move on and to look at the attributes, I want to point out something about this center point right here. Now, in a quadratic function, we have the vertex form of the equation and there is an h and a k value. And in the quadratic function, the h and the k value represent the vertex of the quadratic function. Now, in the cubic function, we have a similar equation. It's called the general form of the equation. It also has an h and a k value. And the h and k value represent this center point. So just wanted you to be aware of that. Um, in just a few minutes, we're going to look at that general form of the cubic function. Now, on to the attributes of the cubic function, or the parent cubic function. Now, remember, domain is the horizontal distance of your graph, or of your function. Now, let's look at the left side of this graph, this part right here. 
Now remember, this part of the curve is going towards two directions. Yes, it's very steep, so it's obvious to see that it's heading downward. But it's also headed towards the left, okay? So this green line represents going towards the left, which is part of our domain, going towards the left infinitely. Now let's look at the right side of the graph, okay? Again, this line, this part of the curve, is being pulled in two directions. Yes, it is very steep, so it's very easy to see that it's going upward, as represented by my orange line. But it is also going towards the right, as represented by my green line. So if you look at my two green lines, they represent the horizontal distance of this graph. And that means it is going from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now we can use the symbol for all real numbers, or you can write it in interval notation or in equality notation. Now let's look at the range. Now as you can see, range represents the vertical distance. And you can tell by my orange lines that it is vertically going infinitely in a negative direction, infinitely in a positive direction. So range for all cubic functions is going to be all real numbers, or negative infinity to positive infinity. Now let's look at end behavior. End behavior is very closely related to domain and range. Let's look at our first statement for end behavior right here. It says, as x approaches positive infinity. Well, that would be this green line right here. So we're looking at this part. As x is approaching positive infinity, what is f of x approaching? Or what is y approaching? And it's also approaching positive infinity. Now, let's look at the next statement. As x approaches negative infinity, well, that's this part of the line and it's going leftward, so as it approaches negative infinity, what is f of x approaching? And it is also approaching negative infinity. Now, just something to keep in mind as we end up in other lessons talking about other polynomial functions. Anytime you have an odd degree polynomial, your domain and range will always be all real numbers. And this is because they will always enter and exit at opposite ends of the graph. Now let's look at the zeros of the function. Now, as we can see, the only place, remember zeros are where our x-intercepts, they're your roots. And the only place this crosses the x-axis is at 0, 0. So the zeros of this function are x equal 0. Now let's look at where the function has positive values. Basically what this really means is where does the function have positive y values? Well, if we look here, this is where our function has positive y values. Now what are the x values for this? Well, our x values are greater than zero. Now where does the function have negative values? Or where does the function have negative y values? and that would be this part of the graph right here. So the function has negative values when x is less than zero. Now, where is this function increasing? Well, remember, we always start at the bottom, the bottom left, if we can. And so here we go. So we're starting down here. We're going upwards and rightwards. Here it flattens out a little, but we're still going upwards and rightwards. Is this function ever decreasing? And the answer is no. So you would say that this function increases throughout the whole domain. So where is the function decreasing? Let's think about it. If it's increasing throughout the whole domain, that means it is never decreasing. So this function never decreases. And now the last question here is, is the function odd, even, or neither? Well, if you remember what I stated just a few minutes ago about odd degree functions always entering and exiting at opposite ends of the graph, that will give you the answer to this. This is an odd degree function. Also, we can tell it's odd degree because we see the exponent up here of 3. 
So anyway, let's move on and let's talk about transformations now. As we learned at the beginning of this lesson, the cubic function has the standard form and the general form. And so the general form is f of x equals a times x minus h cubed plus k, where h and k represent the center of the cubic function. Now remember, if h and k are both zero, all we have left is the parent cubic function, f of x equals x to the third power. So what does an h value do to the parent cubic function if it is not zero? Well, it represents a horizontal shift, meaning it will shift your gra graph either left or right. Now remember, x minus h is part of the formula. So if your h value is positive 3, in the equation it's going to appear x minus positive 3, or x minus 3. If your h value is negative, let's say your h value is negative 3, well that would be x minus negative 3, which is the same as x plus 3. So even though your h value is negative, it will appear to be positive in the equation. So please don't forget that when you're working with the h value in translating or transforming your graph. Now let's talk about the k value. The k value represents a vertical shift, meaning it will shift your parent cubic function either up or down. Now in the formula, you see plus k. So that means if you're Eight, excuse me, if your k value is a positive 3 in the formula, it will read plus 3. If your k value is a negative 3, it will read minus k. Now, the a value performs several functions. First of all, if the a value is greater than 1, or I should say if the absolute value of the a value is greater than 1, it represents a vertical stretch meaning the graph will be just a little narrower. Now, if the a value is in between 0 and 1, or again, I should say if the absolute value of the a value is between 0 and 1, like a fraction or a decimal, like 0.50 or 1 half, that means it represents that the graph has a vertical shrink, which means it will be a little wider. Now, if the a value is a negative number, meaning a negative 2, or a negative 1 half, or even just a negative 1, if the a value is negative, then the graph is reflected over the x-axis. If you are one of my students, or if you have watched my previous lesson videos, you might recognize the a, h, and k values. Other functions that we've done thus far are the absolute value function and the quadratic function. Now let's look at some examples of transformations with the a, h, and k values. If you look at my examples here, you're going to notice that each example only shows one type of transformation. You can and most likely will have multiple transformations or translations in one function or one equation but I wanted you to see individually what each um, transformation does. So in our first example, we have g of x equals x minus 2 to the third power. Now the 2 represents the h value. And remember, if you see x minus 2, that means the h value is really positive 2. And if the h value is positive 2, that means our graph is going to shift to the right 2 units. Now in our second example, g of x equals x plus 2 cubed, you see that we have x plus 2 in the parentheses. Well, that is really saying x minus negative 2, so our h value is equal to negative 2. And that means we will be shifting left, two units. Now in our third example, g of x equals x cubed plus 2. The 2 this time represents a k value, and because it's positive, we will be shifting the graph up two units. Now look at the fourth example, g of x equals x cubed minus 2. 
In this example, the k value is negative 2, so the graph will be shifting down. From the parent function, or excuse me, from 0, 0, it will be shifting down 2 units. Now again, please remember that the parent function, the center point, the h and k values are 0, 0. So in these first four examples, all of these shiftings, it's like you're shifting in the first example, you're shifting that center point of the cubic parent cubic function, you're shifting it to the right two units. Here in this example, from 0, 0, you are shifting it left two units. This one, from 0, 0, you are shifting it up two units. And then like I said, this one, from 0, 0, we are shifting it down. You're shifting your center point. In this example, is going from 0, 0 to 0, negative 2. Now, let's look at the next three. These three examples relate to the a value. Now in this first one, g of x equals negative x cubed, means the a value is 1. But because there is a negative sign in front of the a value, it means that this graph is going to be reflected over the x-axis. Now, it is not going to be wider or narrower because the absolute value of the a value is 1 so it will not change its width. Now in g of x equals 2 times x to the third power, the a value is 2. Now because it's positive, it will not be reflected over the x-axis. But because it is greater than 1, it will be a vertical stretch. And that means it will be narrower. In the last example, g of x equals 1 half x to the third power. The a value is positive, so there is not a reflection. But because it is between 0 and 1, it represents a vertical shrink. And that means that it will be wider. Now, in this lesson today, we have learned a lot about cubic functions. We have learned how to graph them, we have learned what the equations look like, and we've learned how to transform them. I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to working with you again. Bye-bye.